name is Jason West. I'm the mayor of New Paltz. I'll try not to look at the camera. <laughs> um, I was actually uh, in college, and uh, my grandfather didn't know. My grandfather, Philip Schoonmaker, didn't know really anything about his ancestry. We had some stories about Saugerties and the stone house there, but just really the only story was that there was a stone house in Saugerties that our family used to live in. So for a Christmas present, I was looking up, seeing if I could find who his ancestors were. So I was at the library looking through the microfiche at the time of all of the census records. Uh, Carol Johnson, who was a librarian there, and still is, I, I believe, um, you know, asked if she would help, asked to see what I was doing. And I, when I explained it to her, she just kind of laughed want, and wandered away and came back a few minutes later with the nine-volume Schoonmaker genealogy and just dropped it on the table next to me and said, here, this might help you. Um, so I found out, I found a couple of generations where how we connected into the bigger Schoonmaker family tree and that got me back to the Du Boises uh, because Louis Du Bois's daughter, Zara, um, married a Schoonmaker and moved to Kingston and that's who I'm descended from. So my family was here to found New Paltz and then moved away for a couple hundred years until I moved back. Um, yeah, that's how I discovered I was a Huguenot or descended from them. I came, I came here almost by accident. So I just ended up at SUNY New Paltz because I had uh, one more program I was interested in than SUNY Buffalo. And uh, so I found all this stuff after I'd been living in New Paltz for several years. It definitely made me feel more rooted to the area, um, not just New Paltz, but the whole Hudson Valley. Because you know, once you once you find how you connect to one of these old families here, you find out you're related to you know half a dozen of the of the big families. So your family tree gets really sprawling really quickly. You know, when you can put your hand out and touch the stones that your ancestors laid, you know, and have been standing in place for three centuries, there's, uh, there's definitely a strong feeling to it. I don't know how I could describe it other than just that sense of, um, you know, this is ours. The, you know, the idea, the sense of collective ownership that you need. To me, it's fascinating, but uh, it's up to the individual. But I think anyone who does look into their family tree is going to be surprised by that rootedness and connectedness you get a sense of. You know, it's a small part of who I am, but it's definitely there. Um, well, the most memorable one was sometime in 2005 or six. We did a, we ran a new sewer line right next to the Du Bois Fort. And uh, like all the work we do on Huguenot Street, you have to do archeology span ahead of time. What we ended up finding was one of the more important archeological sites ever found in Hudson Valley. Because the stone houses were, I think, the second or third buildings built here. You know, because when the, when the Huguenots moved down from Kingston, they weren't living in stone houses right away. You know, it takes time to build them, right? So what they did is they would live half underground and half above ground in these pit houses. So we knew about them from records, but we never actually found one until we did the sewer line right next to the Du Bois fort. And we found the pit house that um, Louis Du Bois presumably lived in when he was building uh, either the stone house or maybe a wooden one. The pit houses looked kind of like a square with one quarter of it taken out. So it was like a little stubby L shape. Huguenot Street has a bunch of artifacts we found from the pit house. But the most interesting one was one that we ended up having to kind of try to keep secret for a little while when we found um, an Indian Native American burial right in that one notch that was missing from the house. So when 300 years ago or whatever it was when, when um, the Du Bois family was digging that pit house, they actually came within two feet on several sides of disturbing a, a several thousand year old um, Native American burial, we think. Uh, we think it was several thousand years, we, it's hard to tell without excavating it. Um, because once we uncovered the top of the skull, we reburied it again to prevent looters, and because uh, apparently skeletons and such go for six figures sometimes in the black market. So we had secured, we had fenced the whole thing off. We had the public works department and the police kind of camped out overnight while we hit it again. It, but the interesting thing was that I had just fairly recently learned that I was a descendant of Louis Du Bois. So it just kind of had this interesting s synergy where. Uh, you know, my 14th great-grandfather dug this house that we had uncovered and lived there and had just missed this Native American woman. Yeah, it, yeah, it came full circle. Well, before that excavation, um, I guess I really didn't have much of a sense of how old this place was. Uh, we found artifacts that are, I think the oldest one we found was 3,000 years old. So there's a, a little copper 
um, cold hammered beaver pendant that we found. You know, because the, there were people living here for thousands of years before any of the Huguenots showed up. So, you know, that's a story I think that isn't told as much as it should be. It's the story of the people who, who were here before the Huguenots. And obviously we found them buried on the street. Well, let me put it this way, that we found evidence that the flats have been um, farmed for 5,000 years or so, which puts us at about, I think, 3,000 BC. And the pyramids in Egypt started to be built in 2800 BC. So there were people living here, you know, hundreds and thousands of years before the pyramids were ever built and have been living here continuously ever since. Um, which is kind of interesting to think about when you assume that people will basically do the same thing no matter what, um, no matter who they are. So, you know, you're going to go swimming in the river, you're going to go up to Split Rock, and you're going to go up to the mountains. So uh, the idea of people moving from the village up to Split Rock in the summer um, to go swimming or fishing or whatever they were doing back then, um, for longer than the pyramids have existed in Egypt, you know, it gives you a sense of the, the depth of history that's here. And much of that has yet to be written or understood. But I think that's the biggest thing that, that's the biggest change to my perception of the street and the area, was getting a sense of the depth of time that people have actually been living here. That uh, the Huguenots are really a recent phenomena in the area. And for thousands of years, you know, there's God knows how many stories left to be told. Of. Lots of nights walking down the street, just going for a walk um, when I lived downtown. You know, in college I hung out in the cemetery a bunch, which, you know, just to go somewhere to go, just sit, you know, on that, on that little wall. Um, a couple of friends and I used to hang out there once in a while. No, you're not supposed to hang out in the cemetery at all. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. That was 20 years ago. I haven't hung out in the cemetery in years. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I may have forgotten, but I'm pretty sure. You should try it. No. It's a great place to hang out. The ghosts are right across the street. I could have sworn that I was, I was, I, I painted a couple of the houses, because I'm a house painter as well. And I, I could have sworn that in the middle of the day, that friend I was saying, I painted his house. Um, I could have sworn that in the middle of the day, the stereo came on full blast with no one in the, in the house at all. And I thought, I thought the homeowner was, had come in and left again. But um, no, apparently he wasn't home all day. And it was just me and my crew working. And no one else was inside the house. So, I don't know, maybe. He, sw he swears that a corner of the house is built on an old cemetery, so he won't go in the basement, which has a dirt floor on top of the cemetery, apparently. I have no idea whether any of this is true, but it's just a story that I've heard. Mm -hmm.